In this lesson we're going to be talking about state machines. What exactly is a state machine? A state machine is essentially a method for sequencing code. The key purpose behind it is that it provides a flexible and easy to follow programming structure. There are a variety of implementations, but at the heart of them all is the case structure and a loop. Essentially the loop runs over and over again, each time selecting a certain section of code using the case structure. Let's begin by making a simple case structure and building upon it. What our program will do is pop up a single button dialog three times. The first time it will say acquiring, followed by analyzing, and then saving. Afterward, it will automatically stop. We'll start off with our basic state machine architecture. First, place a case structure and drag a while loop over it. We'll use the loop index terminal to select which case we will execute. Wire the terminal to the case selector. The first time through our while loop, our value from the iteration terminal will be zero, so our first case will be zero. Inside this case, we want a pop-up which will say acquiring. The pop-up function can be found in the dialog and user interface subpalette or by using the quick drop menu. We'll only need a one button pop-up in this case. Right click on the message terminal and create a constant. Type acquiring in this constant. The final thing required in this case is to make sure the loop does not stop, so we will wire in a false constant to our conditional terminal. The next iteration of the while loop, our iteration terminal output will be 1. In this case, we again need a pop-up, but this time it will say analyzing. We don't want our loop to stop in this state either, so add another false constant and wire that to the case tunnel we created for the first state. For our final case, we can just make a duplicate of case 1 and change the text to saving, and then change the boolean constant to true so that the loop will stop. Now that we have finished, let's run our code with the execution highlighting on. The first time through the loop, our index terminal will of course output 0 and we will get the appropriate dialog. The program will wait for us to respond to the dialog box. Once we do, the program continues. We see the program moving on to case 1, followed by case 2. Once we press OK in case 2, we see our program will stop because of the true wired into the conditional terminal. Now let's modify our code so that at the final case the user will have an option to allow him to rerun the program again from case 0 or exit. As of right now, this is impossible because our selection terminal is wired to the iteration terminal. To fix this, we must choose the next state from within each state. This is called a transition. This requires memory, which can be achieved in a loop using shift registers. We will begin by disconnecting our loop iteration terminal and moving it out of the way. Also, let's rename our cases. Instead of using integers, we will use strings. Strings allow us to easily identify our next cases without deciphering a sometimes complex code. Our case 0 will become acquiring. Case 1 will be analyzing. And case 2 will be saving. We will add a shift register by right-clicking on the border of the while loop and selecting Add Shift Register. Recall that shift registers in general should be initialized. In this case, we will use a string constant with the text Acquiring. Notice that in our first case, nothing needs to be changed except determining what our next case will be. It is obvious that in this case, it will be analyzing. Remember that the value that goes into the right side of the shift register will be recalled in the next iteration of the loop. In this way, we can allow any state to decide which state it goes to next. Similarly, in the analyzing case, it will be saving. Finally, in the saving state, we'll need to make some modifications. Our pop-up currently only has one button, but we need to make it so that the user has a selection. Right click on the dialog block and replace it with a two button dialog. Relabel the two buttons, rerun, and exit.
The output from the dialog box will now be connected to a case structure, since our code will run differently depending on the answer. If the user says they wish to rerun, the case will be true. In this case, we want to go back to acquiring and set the Boolean constant to false because we do not want the while loop to stop. In the false case, we can wire in the true to the conditional terminal to stop the loop. For the tunnel, it doesn't matter what we wire because our loop will stop. However, make sure something is wired, otherwise we'll have a broken arrow. For now, we'll wire in acquiring. Our program still has a broken arrow because we have not selected or created a default case for our case structure. We'll make our acquiring case the default. Do this by selecting that case and right-clicking the structure. Click on the selection, Make this case default. Now if we run the program, we will go through the three cases. In our third case, we can run the program again. If we do, we will be prompted with the same three cases. When we click Exit, our program finishes. In this lesson, we have learned how to create a state machine using LabVIEW. State machines are one of the most powerful and popular programming architectures. Try experimenting by adding new states and transitions to your code.